Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football. Chelsea lose 2-0 to Manchester City and I've just got one word, shambolic. I really am disappointed with that performance from Chelsea and I'm not a Chelsea fan. I, I find it incredible. And, and, and if you are a Chelsea fan, you must be absolutely fuming. I watched Ipswich play Liverpool yesterday. They lost the game. They'd have been massive underdogs anyway. But for the first 45 minutes at home at Portman Road against a better side, they were aggressive, they were adventurous, they were organised and they really got the crowd going, excited to have a go in their first game of the Premier League season. Chelsea, new manager, loads of money spent, the champions of England may be feeling a bit, bit vulnerable, big season for them in the courts. Chelsea, for the first 45 minutes, had the life of, I don't know, an ant that's been run over. It was just lifeless. It was terrible. And it was inexplicable for somebody, a club, that has changed the manager again, has brought new players in again. All right, you might not have a rhythm. You might not have a style of play that's fluid yet. But that should be made up for by intensity, desire, passion and getting your home crowd up. It was just so bloody lethargic. I mean, I, I don't, you know, obviously for the spectacle that the Premier League is, you want Man City, the best team in the league, to be beaten or given a game. You don't want Man City to stroll into Stamford Bridge not break sweat and win 2-0. And there were a few dodgy decisions, of course. I think it should have been a penalty on Kovacic. But look, nothing's changed there with the PGMOL. They're absolutely in incredibly inconsistent and have obviously spent the summer topping up their tans instead of sorting out what's going on uh, with the quality of the Premier League officiating. But take that away. Man City were in cruise control. And Chelsea, I just, I just don't get it. Look, there's every chance Chelsea will get better. They've got so many good players, so many good players that they've got people like Raheem Sterling having to put a statement out what, as to why he's not even on the bench. Well, because Mudrick's on the bench and Madawaki's on the bench and Neto's on the bench. You know, you can't all be on the bench. Um, so many good players, but I already look at that Maresca. I said it when they appointed him and I just don't see a guy that's going to last long at Chelsea. And when I can see that as a fan and Chelsea fans can see that as fans, then the players are going to see it. The media are going to see it. He's on a hiding to nothing already. Um, but the biggest issue at Chelsea, and, uh, you know, I've, I've said it for the last two years. I'm sure every Chelsea fan said it. In fact, I'm sure everybody watching this has said it. It's absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible that you can spend all that money and have a multitude of 100 million pound midfielders and number 10s and wingers and defenders and not buy a decent goalkeeper and a striker. I mean, what level of ineptitude is that? I mean, you could put me in Todd Bowley's position or CEO or whatever at Chelsea and I'd give you a better team because I would go in and say, like, first things first, look at, look at, look at Newcastle. You take Isaac out of Newcastle, they're going to struggle. Good players around, but he's going to score the goals. Same with Ollie Watkins at Villa. You take Ollie Watkins out of Villa, they're not going to do as well. What does that tell us? What does history of football tell us? If we put a striker in this team that can score 20, 25 Premier League goals we'll be in the top four. And we're not in the top four. And we know we're near the top four for the last few years. Let's get a striker that's going to score us 20 to 25 Premier League goals. We've got the money. We've got over a bloody billion. Let's do that. Let's also get a goalkeeper that is considered one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Because we're Chelsea and we can do that. And we have done that in the past. We've had the likes of Petr Cech. Those two positions. I don't care about another £100 million midfielder from Brighton. I don't care about another centre-back from France or wherever else. I want a top-class goalkeeper and a top-class striker. And then we'll buy the rest. Have Chelsea done that? No. It's always a winger. It's always a midfielder. It's always a centre-back. It's never, let's get the best goalkeeper we can get. Let's get the best striker we can get. And it's not like they're not available. Like, there is a striker market available at the moment with Osman in it. With, with the Ivan Tony in it. It's just off the top of my head. And yet they, they, they go with a young lad in Jackson who is never going to be a top-class striker. He will score goals, but he will also miss goals. And that, look, even in that game, Cole Palmer on the edge of the box is going to shoot. As a striker, I look at the line. If I'm offside, I take a step back to go forward. It's so easy. You can watch Cole Palmer. You know what he's going to do. He's going to shoot. He's not going to cross it. I'm not going to think about moving quick. I just take a step back to go forward in case the keeper spills it. The keeper does spill it, 
but I'm in an offside position for somebody else's shot. It's, it's championship standard. That's low IQ. That costs Chelsea a point, potentially. So, look, for all what Chelsea do, and they never should have let Pochettino go, it is Man City. Everyone would have had Man City winning that game, of course. But in the context of the game, I would have had Man City winning the game playing better against the Chelsea side that played better. What we actually got was a Man City side that just used experience and know-how against the Chelsea side that was ridiculously, ridiculously lacklustre um, and looked like... I mean, shambles is the world. I mean, that's that... I, 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 don't, I know football's changing. I know it's diluting. I know we don't see the goals we used to see. We don't see the individuality. We don't see the passion. The, the officiating is definitely crap. You see players at the end of the game who put in shit performances, smiling and shaking hands and hugging Man City players. Football has changed. But it still remains a game where you expect these players to put on performances for their fans. And if they can't do it on the opening game of the season at home, what does that say for the rest of your season? Because they were just ridiculously lacklustre. And I'm telling you, I watched that Ipswich game and I'm sure there was a lot of other games in the Premier League like that this weekend. Why is it Ipswich, I know they lost, but why is it Ipswich can play like that for 45 minutes in the first half and give it everything and be focused and organised and Chelsea just wander into it like, oh, another new manager, I wonder how long he's going to be here. Um, it's, it's not good. Look, maybe Chelsea will just click and Maresca will be amazing and they'll finish in the top four and if they do there's not a lot to moan about but you, 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 you even I expected a lot more than that and um, I thought they were really really poor with regards to Man City look I, I think I and everybody else apart from Man City fans hope that they're going to fall off hope that they're just going to make this Premier League interesting by not winning another Premier League title um, but they were they, they, continuity is the word isn't it Chelsea would have been a better team with Pochettino in charge today because he'd have took the continuity of last season into this season and they'd have been a better team for it. They've hit the reset button. Man City, regardless of whether Stones or Rodri play, or Foden or Walker, they are a system that everybody knows like the back of their hand. And they can throw different players in. I mean, look, take this away, right? Why do Man City win the league? Because they've got more money and they've got the best squad. Tell me a club in the Premier League this weekend that can say to Rodri, Foden, Walker, Stones, you're not playing, you're not starting because I want to give you a little bit more time off because you played in the Euros final. Man City are so good and so strong, they can leave out four massively important players in an opening day fixture away to Chelsea. Imagine if Arsenal were away to Chelsea. Are they going to rest people like Saka? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Man City are so far ahead, and we saw why today. Because they can leave out some of their best players away to Chelsea because Pep Guardiola's thinking, that'll help me later in the season when they've had a bit more rest than everybody else. And they still win. They're miles ahead. Miles ahead. Uh, get your comments in below. Make sure you smash a like on the video. I'll speak to you on the next one. And don't forget tomorrow, midday live on the channel from the Goldbridge Arms. It's our Premier League review show. Looking forward to seeing you on that as well. Take care, everyone. Get your comments in. I'll speak to you in a bit.